The big mistake most people are making regarding magnesium. Your blood levels show normal magnesium levels. What a lot of people don't know is only 1% of all your magnesium in your body is inside your blood. 99% is deep in your cells. When your body is deficient in magnesium, it'll rob magnesium from your bone, your muscle, and put it in the blood, giving you the illusion that you have enough magnesium if you're just relying on the blood test. There are more sophisticated, advanced ways to determine if you're magnesium deficient, but I'm going to give you this simple way to figure it out. If you have any muscle spasms in your body, muscle twitch underneath the eyelid, anxiety, poor sleep, sugar cravings, and definitely Charlie horses are all clues that you're deficient in magnesium. Typically with the diet, you need about 400 milligrams of magnesium every single day. Almonds are high in magnesium, but you would have to consume five cups of almonds to get that 400 milligrams. Or you can get your magnesium from spinach, but you would have to consume five big handfuls of spinach just to get 400 milligrams. What about chocolate? Isn't that high in magnesium? It's sort of high, but you would still need about four bars of chocolate to get your daily amount of magnesium. On top of that, there are many things that don't allow us to absorb even the magnesium from the food that you eat. For example, if you have inflammation in the gut, that's gonna greatly reduce your absorption rates by up to 60 to 70%. Grains in your diet, refined foods, like refined sugar, starches, that's depleting your magnesium. And then other things will deplete your magnesium like alcohol, caffeine, and also many medications. And of course, the top selling magnesium products are not the best ones to take because not only do they create diarrhea, because they're a laxative, but you really don't absorb much. Like with magnesium oxide, you only absorb like three to 4%. The one I would recommend is magnesium glycinate because that's the one that you absorb 80% and it doesn't create a laxative effect. And the glycinate part of it will help you sleep. Magnesium is one of the master controllers over calcium. You see, calcium has other purposes other than just making your bones strong. Calcium is also used in the body as the main communication signal between cells. And far too often, we accumulate too much calcium inside the cell. And if there's too much calcium in the cell, those calcium crystals start damaging certain parts of the cell. Literally, we calcify as we get older. And you may have heard of the vitamin K2 being the antidote for that because vitamin K2 helps to keep the calcium from accumulating in the arteries. But magnesium is even more important in helping to regulate the excess amounts of calcium. Another thing that magnesium is really good at is preventing kidney stones. It has a hundred times more binding force to the oxalates than calcium. And then let's talk about muscle. It's the calcium that causes muscle to contract and magnesium to relax. So anytime you have a tight muscle, that means you have way too much calcium, but really it's low magnesium, preventing heart attacks, but also preventing any type of problem with the rhythm of the heart. You can correct atrial fibrillation by taking enough magnesium over a period of time, but sometimes it might take months before you really correct that deficiency. You can't correct a very severe deficiency of magnesium by just taking the maintenance dose. Sometimes you have to increase it to 1,000 to 1,500 or more milligrams every single day over a period of months. And this also includes dealing with things like migraine headaches, pain problems like fibromyalgia or pain syndromes. They require a lot more magnesium. And also mood disorders, people that are depressed or even have diabetes. Magnesium greatly helps blood sugar. It's probably because of the demand that a high blood sugar situation creates on magnesium. It depletes magnesium. So the requirement of magnesium, it's much higher for a diabetic. Now let's get to the three secrets. Number one is we used to get a lot of our magnesium from hard water, whether it's from a spring, a well, and then we decided to filter the water like in city water or send the water through a water softener, which actually removes the calcium and magnesium and replaces it with sodium and potassium to make the water less corrosive on the piping and less harsh in washing your clothes. People don't consume hard water anymore. In areas in the country where they don't soften the water, they have much less risk of getting heart attacks. And then if you compare that with areas that do use a lot of water softeners, their risk of heart attacks go up. Okay, secret number two, vitamin D won't work without magnesium. If you're increasing your magnesium, 
also increase your vitamin D and that way they will both work. And just as one side note, vitamin B1, which is really important in reducing stress and gets depleted when you consume a lot of carbohydrates, that also is dependent on magnesium. So when you take more B1, you need magnesium to allow that to work. And then the last and most important secret, magnesium has a super important role in some of your biochemistry. Deep in the cell, you have all sorts of motors that do the work of the cell. Like the one in the mitochondria that literally spins 200 to 400 times a second, it generates ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the body. And so your energy levels, your fatigue is related to how much magnesium you have. So yes, magnesium helps lower cortisol, it helps you sleep, but it also gives you energy. And if you have any type of fatigue, it could be because you're deficient in magnesium. And because magnesium is so important, if you have not watched my other video on magnesium, I'll put it up right here. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book, um, more extensive, called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.